the song of Jesus. What a beautiful song. And what amazing thing it is that this song is offered to everyone, whoever they are, and whatever their needs. God is at work today, right now. Let's just praise him for who he is, for what he's done, for what he's doing right now, and for what he will do if we let him. Let's just praise the Lord. feel good saying that. I've been trying to say it musically for a long time. I don't remember when I first sang praises to God. I grew up in a, a, a pastor's family and we learned that term pretty early in life. In fact, dad and mother tried to raise their own choir. There were 11 children in our family. We had all kinds of combinations of voices. We had dishwashing teams, and there were three on a team, so we always had trios. I started out as a boy soprano. Three of my brothers, older than I, I was a soprano. I could sing, ah. So we sang male quartets using mixed quartet music. So music was a part of my life, and I started taking part of it in my dad's church. And when I was 14, I started leading singing in the young people's service, and. I began to sense that God was talking to me about making music my life, church music. And I had other plans. I wanted to go into business. I thought, Lord, I can do that on weekends. But the week I want for myself, I started leading in Sunday school. By the time I was 16, I was leading the morning and evening worship services, and the Lord kept talking. When I got into the spring of my senior year in high school, a man offered me a position that upon my graduation that was just too good to be true. I never told dad about my musical call, but now I had to tell him. So I went home to talk to him about this position I'd been offered and I told him about my musical call and he very calmly told me the options I had didn't tell me what to do, just talked about it. I went back and talked to that businessman and said I couldn't take the position. I was going to go to college and prepare to work for the church. That was just coming, coming out of the depression. There wasn't any money to go to college. So for two years, I, after graduation, I worked at this and that, trying to keep my head above water. Finally got some borrowed money and went to Olivet, old Olivet. Not many of you know about that place. But some of us had some great times there. 
And while I was there, I got to know a young student friend named Byron Carmony. Byron and I liked to make music together. We'd go over in the old chapel. On a night like, kind of like tonight, the moon was shining brightly. I remember on this one particular night. And we went in that old chapel, didn't turn on any lights. Weren't supposed to be in there. The moon was coming in from that big south window, lighting up the organ and the platform. And I sat in the front row of the choir loft, and Byron sat at the organ and played that wheezy old organ, and I sang whatever he played. And as I sat there that night, it seemed like the presence of God was so close. And he said, I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you going to do what I've been talking to you about? And I said, yes, Lord. I'll do it, and I'll do it gladly. Well, he said, you just give me what you have, and I'll work out the details. And you know those details of just being beautiful? That was more than 56 years ago. And now I've been able to sing the gospel and direct music in thousands of church services, revival meetings, camp meetings across the United States, Central America, South America, Europe. I took German in college and I thought, that's a waste of time. But I've sung the gospel in German, and French, and Italian, and Spanish. Hundreds and hundreds of radio programs in Spanish and English. And it just seems like God has poured out upon me more than one man deserves. But I thank him that Olivet and that chapel, and that place where I made my commitment to him, after all those, all those years of struggle, I thought how wonderful it's been to have him in control, to know that his promises are true. And I thought somebody here tonight, young or old, might be living in that land of, I can't trust him. Let me tell you, you can trust him. The house where Dad and I talked is gone. That moonlit chapel with that wheezy old organ went up in flames one November night years ago. But the promises of God stand true. They're as solid as a rock. You can count on them. From the bottom of my heart, I can sing, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my life to Jesus the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows each day.
true. I didn't really want to be here tonight. And when they asked me, I thought of a thousand different reasons not to come. They asked me to talk about God's faithfulness in our wonderings. And I really didn't think that I wanted to share with 2,500 people all my wonderings. But as long as time went by, finally a little voice said, what are you worried for? I've already forgiven you, so you don't have to worry about them. I'm a child of the church. When they said, go to church, I only knew one church. That was the Church of the Nazarene. When a little evangelist named Fred Thomas came to our church, he talked a little bit funny. That was the first time I ever felt God's call in my life. And while I have not been faithful, God has always been. Not because of anything I've done, but because of a Nazarene mom and dad who loved their boy and who reminded me more times than I really cared to remember and I got to where I could say the whole speech with mom about how she had dedicated me to the Lord before I could walk and that I was still His. For you see, I won't hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter thou in. But when I break up through the clouds, I believe the trumpets will sound, that St. Peter might do a jig, and say we were worried about you, but we're glad you made it. Because the only way a lot of people are going to make it is to take them and to love them. And I had so many friends who cared, who loved, who gave support, and who gave understanding. And I'm thankful for that today. Because the blood that flows from the cross on a hill, it flows so deep and so wide that it can cleanse anything that you might think can't be cleansed. I'm here to tell you it can. I'm thankful for that blood. And I'm thankful for my heritage I don't know about you, but when I get depressed, I drive. I was living in San Diego, California. I had never looked for this place once, but all of a sudden there was Point Loma Nazarene College. Now I'm enough of an Olivetian that I can say, well, they may have the ocean and some palm trees, but they ain't got much else over those cornfields in Illinois. I'm thankful for the touch of God in my life. was a life filled with aimless desperation without hope walked the shell of a man but then a hand with a nail print reached down just one touch and a new life began and the old rugged cross made the difference in a life 
bound for heartache and defeat. I will praise Him forever and ever. For the cross made the difference for me. That the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power to change lives today. For he changed me completely. Now a new life is mine. That is why. By the cross I will stay. 